Monica Spear was born on Monday the 1st of October 1984 in the city of Maracaibo, located in the state of Zulia, which lies on the western border of Venezuela. Her parents were Rafael Spear and Ingeborg Mutz. Her mother's family had emigrated from Germany, whilst her father's family had English ancestry. Ingeborg, Monica's mother, worked for an oil company in Venezuela, and when she retired in the year 2000, the family moved to Orlando, Florida, which is located in the US, of course, when Monica was 16. Her father was a project engineer at Siemens, which is a global industrial manufacturing company. Suffice it to say that the Spear Moots family were not doing bad financially and this allowed Monica to comfortably obtain a bachelor's degree in theatre at the University of Central Florida by the age of 18. Shortly after obtaining her degree, Monica returned to her birth country of Venezuela in an attempt to win the highly coveted Miss Venezuela title. But instead of representing the state of Zulia, where she was born, Monica instead represented Guarico at Miss Venezuela 2004. By this time, Monica was 19, educated, 178 centimeters tall. She was beautiful and, in fact, she even won the Best Body Special Award at Miss Venezuela 2004. Of course, Monica was never going to settle for just the Best Body Award and she ended up being crowned Miss Venezuela Universe 2004 on the 23rd of September 2004. Fellow contestants Andrea Milroy was crowned Miss Venezuela World and Andrea Gomez was crowned Miss Venezuela International. These women were now on a mission to represent Venezuela at the three most famous pageants at the time. Unfortunately, however, Venezuela went unplaced at Miss World 2004 and only managed to place in the top 12 at Miss International 2005. Miss Universe was scheduled for the 31st of May 2005 and it was to be held in Bangkok, Thailand. Monica was so ready. Monica was trilingual and could speak English, Spanish and French. This gave her the amazing ability to communicate with many girls she came into contact with at Miss Universe. The previous year, Venezuela's representative had gone unplaced at Miss Universe. This, coupled with Venezuela's recent non-placement at Miss World 2004, must have weighed heavy on Monica's mind in the run-up to Miss Universe 2005. There were 81 contestants present at the Miss Universe 2005 competition, but only 15 spots available. Monica seamlessly took her place in the top 15, then the top 10, and finally the top 5. In the top 5, Monica looked absolutely angelic in a cut-out back white gown. With her in the top 5 was Natalie Glavova from Canada, who was the eventual winner, Cynthia Olavaria from Puerto Rico, who was the eventual first runner-up, Renata Sonier from Dominican Republic, who was the second runner-up, and Laura Elizondo from Mexico, who was the third runner-up. Monica's bid for the Miss Universe title would eventually end as the fourth runner-up, and just like the most recent edition of Miss Universe, all of the top five was made up of countries from the Americas. Many believe that Monica would have placed even higher, if not win, if she hadn't stumbled during the final Q&A. But luckily for Monica, her biggest successes in life would come from her acting career. After concluding her reign as Miss Venezuela on the 15th of September 2005, Monica began working as a model while searching for acting roles in Venezuela. In 2006, she first appeared in El Desprecio in the recurring role of Tamara Campos. But the true breakthrough and jumpstart for her telenovela stardom would come through her lead role in Mi Prima Ciela, or My Cousin Ciela in English, in which she played a high school student battling leukemia. This role came to her in 2007 at the age of 22. And she was very serious about her acting career. I mean, she didn't get a degree in theatre by mistake. She was dead set on acting being her main source of income and main way of making a living. Also in 2007, she won the New Actress of the Year Award for her work in El Desprecio. 2008 was an even bigger year for Monica. 
Not only did she win a Best Young Lead Actress Award for her work in Mi Prima Ciela, but she also got married and had a baby. Monica married a 33-year-old British businessman named Thomas Henry Berry in June of 2008 and gave birth to their daughter, who they named Maya shortly afterward. Despite now having new marital responsibilities, Monica's career continued to flourish and she got another lead role in Caluna Calsol, which was also a Venezuela telenovela. In the following years, Monica played a lead role in La Mujer Perfecta, or The Perfect Woman, which was very popular. In 2011, Monica began working for the television network known as Telemundo, which is based in Miami, Florida. She played the lead role in a new telenovela named Flor Savaje, or Wildflower in English. For this, she had to move out of Venezuela and to the US. Unfortunately, whilst things were going very well for Monica's career, it soon came to light that her marriage was in trouble. She and her husband sadly divorced in 2012 after five years of marriage. Luckily, it seemed the divorce between Monica and her husband was quite amicable and it didn't seem to affect her career too much. In 2013, Monica got yet another lead role in a Telemundo telenovela called Pasión Prohibita and she was even nominated for Favorite Lead Actress Award for this role later. In January of 2014, Monica and her ex-husband were on holiday in Venezuela with their five-year-old daughter. Unfortunately, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time when their vehicle got a flat tire at night on a highway in central Carabobo. While they were waiting for assistance, they were set upon by robbers. Monica and Thomas allegedly put up much resistance and unfortunately things turned ugly. Monica and Thomas were unfortunately fatally injured and even poor five-year-old Maya didn't escape unscathed and was actually shot in the leg. It didn't take long for the authorities to locate the perpetrators involved in this ordeal. On the 8th of January, they were arrested and many items that were believed to have belonged to Monica and Thomas were confiscated from them. The suspects at this point was 18-year-old Jose Ferreira Herrera, 19-year-old Jean Carlos Colina, 21-year-old Nalfren Jimenez Alvarez, 21-year-old Alejandro Maldonado Perez, 28-year-old Franklin Cordero Alvarez, 32-year-old Leonard Marsano Lugo, 39-year-old Eva Armas Mejias, and 19-year-old Gerardo José Contreras. Gerardo, of course, later famously died in prison in 2020 while serving his 25-year sentence due to tuberculosis-related issues. There were also two minors involved in this crime and of course due to being minors their identities are not public but they were 15 and 17 years old respectively and they both got a four-year sentence for their involvement. 39-year-old Eva Armas Mejias received a 10-year sentence for being an accomplice in the crime. 19-year-old Jean Carlos Colina was sentenced to 26 years in prison whilst 18-year-old Jose Ferreira Herrera and 21-year-old Nalfren Jimenez Alvarez each received a 24-year sentence. All three of these men confessed to their involvement in the crime. 21-year-old Alejandro, 28-year-old Franklin and 32-year-old Leonard all received 30-year sentences. It's absolutely tragic what had to happen to this family, especially a young woman such as Monica, who was truly just on the cusp of starting to make it big as an actress. At the time, much was made of the whole um, socio-political situation in Venezuela and how this contributed to this crime and this tragedy as a whole. I tend not to focus on that so much as I'm not uh, you know, equipped with the knowledge of the political situation in Venezuela, especially so many years ago in 2014, but I still think it's just so absolutely tragic. There were even allegations that the flat tire they got on their car was all set up by these robbers and that's just so scary and tragic. Thomas was only 39 years old when this happened and Monica was 29 which is so tragically young to die. It's absolutely terrible. 
this year their daughter Maya is turning 15 years old. Um, she has been being raised by Monica's parents ever since the tragedy and you know she's very much loved amongst her entire family. Um, luckily she doesn't remember much about this very traumatic and tragic event. I do sincerely hope that she has received some you know psychological evaluation after this happened to her but yes she has grown up to be an absolute beautiful girl it's just such a shame that um you know she didn't have the opportunity to really get to know her mother from the age of five onwards as for monica's legacy i think that in the pageant world we will always remember and love monica i mean she was an absolutely amazing miss universe contestant um, in the top five and you know around that time the fourth runner-up which is absolutely amazing she did Venezuela so proud and she was obviously one of many Venezuelan Miss Universe contestants who have done absolutely amazing so she definitely lived up to the name of Miss Universe Venezuela thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if I left anything out especially if you're Venezuelan um, a lot of the articles were written in uh, Spanish so yeah my Spanish is non-existent so please let me know I'd love to know thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe and I will see you in the next one bye